evening, ladies and gentlemen. Harlequin Koho here, and you know, I get a lot of requests uh, asking how to level uh, particular commanders and where to spend skill points and all that sort of thing. And while I can't answer all of those questions right now, I thought today would be a good time just to go ahead and look at my own armor commander. I recently went through and had to spend all the skill points again uh, after that last patch. And so I figured today, why don't we just take a look through how I personally like to spend my armor skill points. So for non-armor commanders out there, sorry, uh, we'll get to you later. But for tonight, let's take a look at some armor skill points. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and jump into my commander tree. And you know what? Let's go ahead and just uh, retrain right now. Now I'm going to go ahead and click retrain, and you know what? Since I'm using this to promote Go Coho, I might as well go all the way and spend a little bit of Coho cash here today. So boom, got to go ahead and retrain all that, and a blank slate. I like that little old uh, uh, thing going on here. So uh, let's take a look at some of the first obvious abilities here. First off, um, for the first point, I think uh, everyone would agree that uh, Calliope is a no-brainer, and uh, alongside that, Pershing is a no-brainer. Now. Uh, for Calliope, at the very least, uh, that, that gets used everywhere all the time. I have, without hesitation, I would recommend every single person put every single point into Calliope's. I'll uh, go through and, and explain what all these are, but it's such a useful ability, you should pretty much always do that. Um, first off, this entire left-hand column here basically makes it behave like a regular Sherman. Uh, this gavel here, for whatever reason, uh, increases its speed, so it moves like a regular Sherman. And these two uh, make it fire like a regular Sherman. The next column here increases the amount of rockets, each adding 5 to the barrage for a total of 15. The next column uh, increases range by uh, 20, 16.5, and 12.5%, so big old range increase there, super useful. And uh, these last two increase, sorry, decrease the amount of munitions it requires, so it goes from 40 down to 15 uh, by subtracting 25 with both of these. Having all of these points allows you to get a second Calliope, which is awesome! So many people constantly complain uh, that that's the one thing they hate about fighting armor commanders. So you want to be one of those kind of armor commanders, you want all these points. Next up, let's take a look at the Pershing. So um, you could probably get by without a Pershing in some circumstances, but I play a lot of team games, and the ability to call out two Pershings in a long, drawn-out team game, and to have two Pershings and two Calliopes on the field, oh, it's so brutal. So I pretty much always spend points in that. If you're a 1v1 player only, I bet you could get by with not spending all of these points, but I'm going to go ahead and just spend the way I do, which is on every single one of them. So click, 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 click. I'm just going to go through all of these, and then I'll, once again, I'll explain it all. So these two on the left basically just reduce the command points, uh, so you, you can get the Pershing at earlier levels. You can get it at level 8 with this instead of level 10. Um, the high velocity gun, this used to be called long range shot, or sorry, the, sh the, the ability is called long range shell, uh, but this point is called high velocity gun. So the long range shot uh, is a activated ability you can use, just kind of like a one time shot against people with a little bit of a cooldown. Uh, at, fir at first it does, uh, it has 100% accuracy, but it does 50% damage. You can get the damage uh, bumped up to 125% by spending these three points, and by spending these two points here, the shot will always armor penetrate. So it's got a 100% penetration chance, uh, therefore it won't bounce off and that sort of thing. Uh, one point here for defensive smoke, you can pop a smoke uh, to make it harder to hit your tank and that sort of thing. Um, not entirely necessary, but if you want double Pershings, you have to get it anyways. Um, but uh, the two abilities here share the same cooldown, so it's not like you can have smoke and be long range shotting. You have to kind of choose one or the other. These two abilities uh, are super awesome. They make the Pershings abilities free. So you can do the long range shot for no munitions, smoke for no munitions. And of course, getting all of them allows you to eventually have two Pershings on the battlefield. So super awesome. I like all of those. And uh, now for the rest, this is where it gets kind of fun. First up, um, I'm going to go ahead and start with the... Oh, whoa, what am I doing? Allied War Machine. Haha, <laughs> I don't want that. I want Self-Repair. Oh, yeah, there we go. So Self-Repair is the ability that once you activate it... Um, for a bunch of munitions, I believe it costs like 125 munitions. Yep, 125 munitions, it'll uh, repair all of your vehicles on the battlefield with a little repair over time effect. Uh, f I want everything in this column, and I want everything in this column, and then we'll talk about these in the middle. So the left-hand column here is going to increase the repair rate by 25%. 25% and 25%, so 75% faster repair rate. Uh, and the right-hand side increases the duration by 5 seconds speed, so 15 more seconds of duration. I think, in practice, those are awesome to have. And then really, um, because I, I, I've thought this through and I want to spend more points later on other things, I really only want to spend 3 points here, and I could kind of put 2 in one and 1 in the other, or you know something like that. But really, when you get right down to it, uh, these abilities here, this reduces... Normally when you repair, it slows you down and slows your rate of fire. Uh, this gets rid of the movement penalty somewhat, and this gets rid of the attack rate penalty. I don't ever like trying to retreat while repairing and stuff like that, and I would rather just never get into that situation and have to rely on it. So I just don't spend points here at all, and I will put all three points into um, 
uh, attacking better. Because I feel like when I'm using uh, repair, I'm trying to get an edge and be able to kill something. I'd rather be shooting faster. So that's just my personal playstyle. And again, other people can easily take points out of other abilities and up all of this sort of stuff. Because I definitely, as a player, I tend not to get Sherman tanks and stuff. I tend to just rely on Greyhounds for a little bit and then go into Calliope's. That's just my playstyle, but we'll get into that. So uh, I'm fine with all of that. Now for the next ability on the list here, I like HVAP. HVAP is such a great uh, ability here. This is the high velocity armor piercing rounds. Costs 30 munitions and you can apply it to a random vehicle or anti-tank gun. And uh, it does a lot of cool things. So first off, I pretty much want to get all of these practiced gunner uh, abilities here. So the first three abilities here mean that anybody who has HVAP on them will be more accurate and increases accuracy by 15, 15, and 15, so 45% more accuracy. That's awesome, even if you're just attacking infantry or something like that, being more accurate means more kills, and that's super useful. Likewise, uh, reloading faster, which is what these two do. Um, even if you're not attacking armored units, reloading faster means you kill things better. This final ability down here that unlocks when you get all of that increases the armor penetration. Super useful. Uh, I like to put HVAP on my Calliope and attack Stugs and Panthers and things like that. Super, super awesome. So, And then uh, the far right hand side extra rounds means that this ability stays around longer, 50% longer duration. On, and uh, really, this game could be a game of seconds and inches sometimes. And so having uh, armor piercing rounds up just it's one of those things that'll just it'll benefit you because you'll get that final parting shot on somebody just because it would just happen to still be up. This middle column here increases the veterancy gained by vehicles that have HVAP on them. I'm sure some people get this ability. I totally skip it because those are points I can put elsewhere. And I know veterancy uh, does affect long-term game with damage and things like that, but uh, in the short short run, it doesn't do anything for damage, so I just ignore it. But that's just kind of how I think about things. So. Let's take a look here at this final ability. Now, there's a bunch of things to choose from. Armored Combat Group that ca calls in a bunch of units. Uh, I never really liked that because I don't mess with too many of these units. Uh, raid allows vehicles to capture points. I'm never in that situation. I always make sure I have infantry to cap points. Uh, Allied War Machine is useful because it replaces things like lost jeeps and lost light vehicles and lost tanks. But um, I don't use a lot of tanks and I don't use too many vehicles. I just use a couple of Greyhounds and that's it. So I don't really like using that. So the final one, which I think is awesome anyways, is Armor Bounty. We'll go ahead and select Armor Bounty. Um, Armor Bounty is free and you can use it right away at level zero. And what it does is it gives you fuel and manpower whenever you kill a unit with a vehicle while it's active. So um, the name of the game here for me is I want these two abilities on the left hand side, uh, which basically give your vehicle a stacking buff every time they kill something. Which it, once you get used to this idea, if you're Pershing turns and kills like, you know, three guys with one shot, he gets three stacks of a buff that give him 10% damage and, uh, and uh, speed and things like that. So uh, damage and speed really really cool if, if you then turn and hunt down a panther or something like that so uh cool ability plus it also buffs you with a little bit of money early game uh, i totally skipped the jeep stuff i'm not much of a jeep guy so i the name of the game here is just unlock this as fast as i can so uh fuel salvage here makes it so you get a little bit more fuel when you kill something sure i'll go and, and click on that um and then I have no other uh, options here, so I'll just be forced over here into increasing duration by five seconds. And by then I unlock this. So now I pick that. And again, I want to get to seven points in order to buy this one. Uh, so I'm just gonna start um, clicking through here. You can see fuel siphons means you get one fuel every time you kill a unit. Okay, sure, I'll take one of those at least. And, uh, and then I'll get the third level of this. Uh, because that's my last point. Now you can see I'm level 48, so I have two more points. And so my second, my next two points would be I'd, I'd increase duration one more time, and then I'd pick that, and I'd be done. You know, I don't get the top tier of all this stuff yet, but I've spread my abilities kind of evenly out across everything. So I'll stop with that for now. But that's my favorite way to do Armor Commander, uh, even with the last two abilities that I haven't put in there yet. I'm sure other people have variations, and there's lots of places where you could uh, sa shave points off and stuff like that. But Let's take a minute now and go one step further, and people like to ask, well, what do you then use in your um, army depot? Okay, cool. We'll take a look at that. So I tend to like to favor uh, engineers and riflemen. I think pretty much all good players do this, and uh, your engineers and your riflemen are your army early game on. So, so much of the early game determines the late game that I think it's really important to make sure they're buffed up. So I don't skimp at all on my riflemen. I give them the sight. I give them the body armor and I give them the accuracy. Pretty much the best of those that you can get, go for it. Uh, for my engineers, I kind of like fast capture. That's necessary for just capping points quickly. And I like rifles. 
Now, depending on your playstyle, you kind of have a few options for these last three abilities. I like really beefy Greyhounds. Not too beefy, but just a little beefy, you know. <laughs> I have the Rapid Fire 2, uh, the uh, Toughness 3, which is 24% health, that's awesome, and the Extra Damage, which is 10% extra damage. That makes that first Greyhound really tough. Uh, but there's a few other extra things I could put in here. Uh, most notably, I could go for Sticky Bombs, Long Range 2. I love that. Uh, it makes it so much easier to throw Sticky Bombs against stuff. I could also go for uh, Engineer Regeneration if I wanted to have a couple of extra Engineers early game. I like that ability. Uh, engineer Mine Hunting with 50% radius. That's awesome for one versus one if you expect that your uh, enemies are going to be doing mines a lot. And uh, Engineer Rifles are... Wait, I have Engineer Rifles. I'm, st I'm stupid. That's not what I meant to say at all. But... Um, those are all pretty good abilities. Uh, there was one final Greyhound ability here that I like, which is the Armor Piercing 2. That's cool if you're going to be, you know, attacking Pumas and stuff like that. But otherwise, that's a pretty good overlook overview there. Otherwise, for hero choices, um, pretty much I love Wilson's Rifleman. I love Gladiator Rifleman. You can see I went out of my way to level all these to level 5. Uh, and I love the Reconnaissance Jeep, which has the ability to call down artillery shells. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. I could probably put an Assault Jeep in there. Uh, that's also fun. Uh, for the motor pool, I have a Duffy's anti-tank on. I've really been meaning to level it, but I haven't. I think a fully leveled support half-track is just awesome if you really want to re uh, reinforce your troops in the field and that sort of thing. It has a bigger radius and speed and all that sort of junk. Uh, and then I have a skilled Greyhound here that I leveled to 5, but honestly, I think it's always better to get a plain old Greyhound and spend the munitions to upgrade it. Uh, meanwhile, uh, for the Weapon Support Center, I like having a variety here. I've got a Survival Sniper, just in case. Uh, I have a, you know, a reasonably leveled, skilled HMG team. I think it's good to have a good HMG team. And Destructive Mortar Team, I'm still leveling, but those guys are cool. Again, they can call down artillery. It's nice to have uh, other abilities to call on artillery, especially as an armor commander when you don't have any of that stuff early game. Uh, meanwhile, for tanks, um, in case I do go tanks for whatever reason, I like being able to just spit out a single hero tank. So I have a durable Sherman and a durable tank destroyer. Uh, I like them both because um, they have more hit points and that sort of thing. But uh, in terms of heroes, uh, I believe I also have a field uh, a field tank destroyer as well. Sorry, uh, but. Uh, those are all kind of fun, but I don't really use them that much. Uh, and for my engineers, I like keeping demolitions engineers on hand just so I can uh, have minesweepers and be able to detonate bunkers and stuff like that. I don't use them every game. I know there's better heroes to use, but I keep them handy just in case. So I hope that was some help to you guys. Uh, again, this is just an overview of the armor commander abilities. Hopefully in the future, I'll have some more abilities to go over and that sort of thing. And uh, let me know if you think these kind of walkthroughs are helpful because I could always do more of them. Either way, I'm Harlequin Coho, and you guys have a good night.